I see. Thank you so much. The Adventurers Guild has been overwhelmed these days. <laughs> no worries at all. We've always valued the strength of adventurers. Given the current situation, it's vital that we all work together. Since we're facing the same enemies, I'll send you the intel we've collected on the Abyss so far. Then we can take a look at how to coordinate our efforts. All right. Thank you so much. Hi, Catherine! It's us! Got any new commissions? Ah, you two have come just in time. I've got some good news. The Pyro Archon has finished assembling her forces and stationed them all across Natlan. Given how the Abyss has ramped up its activities lately, we can no longer afford to act only after receiving news of an invasion. So the Pyro Archon suggested that the Scions of the Canopy and the Adventurers Guild focus on collecting and disseminating intel. That way, we can stay informed of everything that's happening across the land. Once we receive word of enemy activity, we can notify the nearest camp and the stationed forces can take immediate action. Yes, precisely. This should also allow us to focus on gathering information, rather than running around and trying to tackle everything at once. So please also take a chance to relax, you two. You've been working hard these days, and this will be a good opportunity for some well-deserved rest. So that's the plan! Whew, we can finally stop and take a break! Paimon knows that! It's not like Paimon just wanted to lay here and do nothing! <laughs> the movements of the Abyss are always unpredictable. There have also been times when it suddenly became more active in the past. The people here generally see it as something like an acute natural disaster. Once the disaster is over, everyone will return to their normal lives. We just all hope that day will be sooner rather than later. Oh, right. Most people have no idea just how bad the situation has gotten in the Night Kingdom. Oh, hey, Kachina! Are you feeling better now? Legendary Forger of Ancient Names! Paimon still can't believe anyone could forge those things. Hey, have some confidence in yourself, Kachina! After all, you're our... Ah, yes, so I've heard. So young, and yet you've already got quite the reputation. Wait, are, are you Outlanders? Yep, we're travelers who just arrived in Natland not too long ago. No, I, I mean, I was aware that you're travelers. It's just no one told me that you're Outlanders. No, the only thing she said is that a new hero had pledged himself to the plan. But we need to forge an ancient name to ensure he'd be able to return safe and sound. And she did mention that it would be quite difficult to forge an ancient name for them, but at the time, I thought she was just commenting on my skills. But I seem to understand where the uh, true difficulty lies now. <sighs> oh, I, I wouldn't go that far. I'm used to it, really. I just huh, need a moment to process things. The Pyro Archon's requests are always difficult to fulfill, and uh, we used to argue a lot. Honestly, it's uh, probably for the better that she didn't bring this up at the time. <sighs> anyway, 
I can't argue with her if she isn't here, and it'd be pointless to take my anger out on someone else. But, ooh, just because I understand her rationale doesn't make me any less upset, after all. She must have known that forging an ancient name for an outlander is an impossible task. It's impossible? As you probably know, an ancient name is a symbol of a hero's sparing glory, which grows even richer and heavier as generations of successors inherit it. We forge ancient names by engraving the heroic deeds of an individual who will become the first hero of that particular name. But they were all performed outside of Natlan, correct? Yeah, that's right. Then those deeds haven't been recorded by the Night Kingdom. To take it one step further, even if you had performed heroic deeds in Natlan, as an outlander, your actions still wouldn't have been recorded by our lands. Only memories and experiences that have been acknowledged by the Wyab can be used as a basis for an ancient name. Even the greatest of craftsmen cannot create something out of thin air, you know. That's just how it is. Seems the Wyab don't want just anyone to get a name, huh? Mawika, of all people, should know better than anyone. Yet she's still entrusted the task of forging the ancient name to me. Oh, Paimon gets it. Nobody's happy being asked to do the impossible. Ugh, don't remind me. Let's just, uh, focus on how we can pull this off. How to achieve the impossible. Uh, you mean you're already willing to accept the task? Well, what else can I do? What's happened is already done, and it's not like I can outright defy the order of my Archon. If she gave me this order, then she believes the ancient name is an indispensable part of her plan, and that I'll be able to find a way to make it happen. In other words, the order is an affirmation of my abilities. Oh, not only has she accepted the task, but now she's looking for silver linings? The key is getting the Wyab to somehow acknowledge the Traveler's existence and record his heroic deeds. We heard the voice of a Wyab when we were in the Night Kingdom before. We even had a whole conversation with her. If we can talk to her again, maybe we can figure something out together. Well, every tribe has their own Wyab. How do we know if the one you met is indeed the best one for us to talk to? Plus, considering the unprecedented nature of this situation, I have a feeling that the acknowledgement of one Wyab alone would probably not be enough. Ah, <sighs> I don't know. That requires a level of knowledge that I do not possess. We need to find a consultant who's an expert on all things Night Kingdom and Wyab. The first person who comes to mind is Seat Lolly at the Masters of the Nightwind. The one we call Granny Eats Tali. Oh, we've heard that name before. We used her spirit speaker's stone to find Kachina's ancient name. A person who can make something like that must be pretty impressive. I'm unsure she'd be able to help. Uh, still, she's older now and quite eccentric. It's hard to even book a meeting with her, given that she's constantly holed up in a room and doesn't like to be disturbed. I've heard that to get her help, you have to be extremely patient with her and know how to keep her spirit up. To break it to you, but... Huh. Why is that? I mean, didn't she already help you before? And you even managed to save Kachina. Well, yeah. At the cost of her spirit speaker stone being split into two. <sighs> Great going, Malika. We're already off to a rocky start here. In that case, I guess your only option is to try to emphasize that this is an important order from the Pyro Archon. Hopefully, I'll also write you a letter on your behalf. If you can find someone to deliver it and mention some good things about you, then that should help too. I'm sure hopes so. a Hal won't interrupt when he's talking, though. All right, Kanich is a seasoned negotiator. I trust that he'll know the best things to say. Uh, please just give me a moment to write the letter, and we can meet up near the Statue of the Seven later. Sounds good! We'll take a stroll in the meantime. Yeah, 
I'm sorry to put this on you, Kanich. It's just that you're probably the only person who knows how to deal with her. Oh, wait, so Kachina and the Traveler also know about the plan? Shilonen is one of four that have already been acknowledged. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, then I suppose there's no need to keep any secrets between us. Having companions walk by your side is perhaps the best solace when facing such a bleak reality. Given how the Masters of the Nightwind love to babble about dreams and revelations, they're already a pretty strange bunch to most. I've never met Auroran, but if they consider him the odd one, he's got to be pretty far out there. Huh. Makes sense. But Paimon wonders how Seat Lolly could be the first one to notice Auroran's disappearance if she spends the whole day in her room. Oh, so if I'm following, you mean we'll help her investigate Roron and the captain's whereabouts? Yeah! Plus, we kind of owe her one anyway to make up for breaking the spirit speakers down. Ah, this is a pretty well thought out plan. As expected of Molly Poke and each. Then, uh, yeah, I'll leave my letter to you. Let's hope Seat Lolly can meet at the stadium in two days. Okay, then let's part ways for now. Hey, Shilonen, how's everything going? Oh, hi, Traveler and Paimon. I have, uh, bad news. Seat Lolly did not reply to our request. Although, I suppose I'm not too surprised. She didn't even bother to give Kanich a response? Guess she really does have quite the ego then. Yeah, well, she can be also quite eccentric, though she's one of the most gifted people around. Even the Masters of the Night went off and struggle to work with her. My guess is that she probably has other reasons for not deigning us with a response. But let's go to the stadium and see if we can meet her there. If we do get a chance to talk to her in person, we can still try to work something out. That's true. Let's go! Buddy. Seems she's just not gonna show up, huh? <sighs> well, we tried to be as considerate as we could, but she's under no obligation to help. That might be true, but this is still a request from the Pyro Archon, right? Shouldn't the subject always answer the call of their Archon? <laughs> a subject? Well, if you ask me, I'd say we're all more like friends with the Archon. Yes, Mawika is our leader, but that doesn't mean there's any kind of tall barrier between us and her. The only thing is that she often has very high expectations of us. Huh. So even though she's super powerful, it sounds like she's actually pretty down to earth and easy to get along with. Unlike that old hag Granny eats to Lee, right? Does she think she can ignore us just because she's famous? You all talk about her like she's some kind of huge deal, but she didn't even bother to reply to our letter! Seriously, if she didn't want to come, she could at least let us know. If that's what aging does to you, Paimon never wants to get old. <clears throat> oh, really? So, that's how you see me? Uh, who's there? Who's talking next to Paimon? Oh, don't mind me. 
I'm just a disgruntled old hag, right? Ugh, come on, relax. I'm sure my bark's worse than my bite. Huh? Seat Lolly. Wait, you're Seat Lolly? You're Granny Eatsley? Yes, Granny Eatsley. But emphasis on Eatsley, not Granny. Ah, oh, you must know this trope from light novels, surely. They use it all the time. The young man who's actually the oldest person in the room. The girl next door who turns out to be a seasoned veteran. The wise sage who looks like a little kid. Oh, wipe that look off your face! You've seriously never seen an older lady that doesn't look her age? <sighs> okay, well, don't go thinking it's a trick either. See? I'm barely wearing any makeup. Did I forget to mention? She's called Granny, but, uh, she's actually pretty young. <laughs> it was an honest mistake. I guess we've just gotten used to it. Um, I'm on sorry. So, how old are you actually? What? Uh, how dare you? Don't you know it's rude to ask a lady her age? I, Paimon really didn't mean to offend you. It's just that uh, your case seems really unique. Oh, Paimon just wanted to apologize, but now she's putting more and more of her foot in her mouth. Really, Paimon just got a little mad since we thought, well, you were going to leave us out to dry. Hmm. <sighs> it was my idea to invite you here, Seat Lolly. So if you're upset, you can just take it out on me. Alright, I was only joking. I didn't mean to chastise anyone. There's really no need to take all this so seriously. If anything, I'm gonna feel awkward if we keep this going. I received Kanich's letter and was planning to attend this meeting. Since I had already decided to come, I figured there was no need to draft a reply that simply said, Understood. Besides, just showing up is the most important part. No? But, of course... It's also natural for people to get held up by one thing or another as they're trying to leave the house. <laughs> it certainly was a bit awkward to see that everyone else had arrived before me. At first, I was thinking of quietly sneaking over, but since you were already here waiting for me, I started to think about how I should phrase my apology, only to hear you all talking smack about me. <sighs> anyway, that's the whole story. Uh... <clears throat> Honestly, it's not like I owed you an explanation, anyway. Huh? What's with that expression? Was she feeling embarrassed just now? When the Masters of the Night wins, so they struggle dealing with her. Huh, I wonder if the feeling is mutual. Huh, she seems to be pretty awkward herself. Everything she does and says seems a little forced. Ahem. <clears throat> anyway, Shilonen, I heard that you require my help in crafting an ancient name. Correct. The situation isn't like anything we've handled before. Let me explain. Huh, I see. So Mauika has asked you to forge an ancient name for an outlander. Well, that would be a first. And you've also heard all about Auroron. I must say, he's always been a good kid. I can't see him joining the Fatui of his own volition. He must have been coerced somehow. Yeah, that's what we came here to ask you. We'll help bring Auroron back if you help us solve the problems of forging the ancient name. What do you think? Hmm... Uh, I suppose I'll just call you Traveler for now. Traveler, come here. Let me take a good look at you. Hmm... Wealth leads to unending conflicts between people. Yet you alone transcend the value of gold. Baleful thunder and wrathful waves bring terror to mortal hearts. Yet, again and again, you've braved them to find new worlds. A weary yet free soul, even the most verdant leaf in the forest, will pray for your happiness and safe passage. <sighs> Those are all the things that I could see in you. You've experienced far more than even most mortals could dream of. 
You possess the heart of a sincere hero, along with the conviction to lift a torch above your head and walk headlong into the night. Huh? Don't move. There's something here. Huh? W what thing? Don't scare Paimon. Is the Traveler gonna be okay? Ah, uh, shoo! Ah, uh, that should do it. You've just returned from the Night Kingdom, so some fragments of souls were still stuck to your body. No need to worry. I've just cleared out the last of them. <laughs> Isn't that kind of like having part of a ghost come back with you? Uh, it's nothing as serious as that. If left unattended, the most it could do is stir up some chaos in your mind. And generally worse in your mood. Oh, in that case, better to get rid of them. It was nothing. Shilonen, let's follow your proposal. Once you've brought Auroron back, I'll take you to see the Lord of the Night. The Lord of the Night? But don't we need to talk to the Wyab of the tribes? Something this important is beyond their jurisdiction. Only the Lord of the Night can decide whether we can grant an ancient name to one who does not hail from our lands. The Lord of the Night is an ancient entity that rules over the entire Night Kingdom, constantly borrowing the power of the Sacred Flame to combat corrosion from the Abyss. Oh, so you're basically saying it's even more powerful than the Wyab of the Tribes. Well, that sort of makes sense, being the Lord of the entire Night Kingdom and all. Uh, not exactly. It's not so much that one's more powerful than the other. Uh, but never mind. That's not important. It would take too much time to explain. Just listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. The Lord of the Night is currently in a deep slumber, and we can only communicate with its consciousness while in a trance. In other words, in a dream. But I will need to prepare a few more things if we are to hold a ceremony to achieve the state of the trance. I'll make a list. Can any of you get everything for me? I can go. It'll probably be a long list, so better leave it to someone who knows all the local vendors. Sounds good! Then we'll go with St. Lolly to track down Aurora! Phew, <sighs> the Fatui are nothing to scoff at, so please, be careful during your investigation. Yep, we'll be sure to play it safe. Alright, now it's time for us to catch that brat and bring him back. <sighs> oh, uh, I'm sorry I made you wait earlier. It was actually because I decided to swing by Auroron's place to look for clues. He has always lived alone. And I found a broken jar in his house. There was also something off about his phlogiston aphids. Which I assume is because their keeper has been gone for quite some time. And interestingly enough, I saw some slash marks in the house. That did not match any of our local weapons. My guess is they were left by Snezhnayan arms. Oh, sounds like the Fatui broke into his house and took him hostage. But why would they kidnap a kid who just... Spends his days living in the country and raising aphids. He's only in his 20s. What would they want with him? <clears throat> That's not to say that I believe he's totally innocent, of course. Since he's the only one who was kidnapped out of everyone in Natlan, he must have done something to attract their attention. <sighs> in any case, we'll get to the bottom of this once we manage to get him back here. I'm truly sorry to put you two through all this trouble with me. But... Uh, please help me get him back. You can count on us! Alright, then let's start by heading to where Auroron was seen last. Uh, this is the spot. An eyewitness claimed to have seen Auroron speaking to some Fatui soldiers here. I don't know how much you're willing to believe me, but Auroron really is a good kid. I see no reason why he'd suddenly get involved with the Fatui. I'm convinced that what the witnesses saw was actually the Fatui coercing him, or perhaps trying to extract information. Uh, however, I doubt anyone would believe me, given there are no signs of a fight. Didn't Kanich say that she's a big name in that land? Feels kinda weird to see her so frustrated and helpless like- Auroron? Well, he was left at the side of the road as an infant. And the people of the tribe took him in. You could say that everyone had a hand in raising him. He learned a lot from us. 
and once he reached adulthood, he built himself a house out in the countryside. He spends most of his days growing vegetables and raising aphids, living off of what he harvests from the garden. <sighs> He's always been such a good kid. He would even get his friends to deliver whole bags of fresh produce to my place. Oh well, let's keep looking. He can answer all of our questions once we find him. He's been raising phlogiston aphids for a long time, and since they were disturbed, they secreted a special type of phlogiston. We can use that substance to track his movements. Let's follow the phlogiston trail. Huh? What trail? Paimon doesn't see anything. Oh, right. I forgot your eyes don't naturally perceive such things. Uh, here, give me your hand. How about now? What do you see? Whoa, Paimon can see it now too! That's right. I used a spell to temporarily transfer a portion of my senses to you. For a short while, you'll be able to see the phlogiston too. Wow, you can even share your senses with us? First time Paimon's heard anything like that. It requires a very rare spell that most people aren't adept at. But don't worry, it's a cinch for me. Between the two of you, it seems the Traveler's senses are a bit stronger than Paimon's. When I held your hand just now, I could sense that you've got a great affinity for Phlogiston. You're extraordinarily gifted. Anyway, we'll need to use our vision now to track down Auroron. Good luck, you two. What does she mean by deep and confusing? As far as elderly shamans go, I'd say that I'm already pretty easy to talk to. Is there any other old hag who's as fluent in the language of the youth as me? Uh, but is my way of speaking still not trendy enough? I've already tried my best to match their speech patterns, but... Given the looks on their faces just now, or perhaps I'm still not fashionable enough? But that can't be, right? Ugh. Don't tell me they're still getting the impression that I'm super old-fashioned. Uh, huh? Was that... See Lolly's voice? Uh, now that I think about it, it's a good thing I found some helpers this time. Some things are best done with the help of friends. Oh? <laughs> they appear to be feeling quite confident. <laughs> Looks like our work will go smoothly. Judging by Paimon's experience as a guide, it definitely looks like- Uh, wait. The phlogiston here is a bit odd. Let me see. <sighs> Paimon sees a small shape here. Could it be... some sort of symbol? This is a distress signal for the Masters of the Nightwind. Only someone from our tribe would recognize it. So Auroron was indeed being threatened. We've got to find him. Fast. Uh, leaving such a subtle mark implies that he was trying to be discreet. In other words, he was probably under the Fatui's watch. Uh, if they notice us, we can just charge in and fight them to the death. But... Uh, but what if my darling grandson is also there? I can't have him caught in the crossfire. Uh, no, I've got to be careful. Otherwise he'd get hit as well. Uh, how annoying. No. No, I've got to stay calm and keep my composure.
really are a one-trick pony, you know. There are traces of people staying here, too! Uh, wait a second. The phlogiston around here is jumbled up. I can also smell a mix of elements in the air. Pyro, Electro, and some other elements as well. Kanich told us that you were super amazing. No wonder you can sense so many more things than us. Huh. <laughs> it's about time that little brat said something nice about me. There are signs of a struggle here. Judging from what's left on the scene, there must have been a fight. But after that, the factions seem to have gone their separate ways. Both the phlogiston and the elemental traces in the air support that. Do you still remember the little mark we found before? Paimon's thinking, what if Auroron wanted to leave another distress signal, but was caught by the Fatui? Given there are two signals leading from here, we should split up as well. I'll take this direction, and leave the other one to you. Let's meet up again later. <sighs> Roron! What the heck were you doing? It's one thing to trouble me, but now I had to bring other people into this as well. Ah, <sighs> you little brat. And off she goes! Traveler, did you hear all of that as well? Once Seat Lolly left, that voice went away as well. Paimon even tried calling her name inside Paimon's head, but there was no response. So you were thinking the same thing! Paimon also thought that if we could hear what she was thinking, then she could probably also hear what we were thinking in our heads. She did say that she was quite adept at this spell, and it doesn't sound like she's had any trouble with it in the past. <laughs> if you think about it, she's really got a lively inner world. It paints quite a different picture from Paimon's first impression of her. Did you find something? Huh. So we can't tell where Auroron might have gone from- That's weird, the phlogiston trail suddenly stops! We can't make anything of these footprints either. But he can't have just evaporated into thin air, right? We know he wasn't alone, he had all those Fatui with him. So, you can hear the sounds of the wind from beneath the earth. I'm very sorry, but please do not move. I have no desire to hurt you. I apologize that our first meeting has to take place like this. It's just that you're much like one of those animals with ears that perk up as soon as it senses danger in their environment. And given your combat proficiency, I would not have been able to gain an advantage over you if you were anywhere else in the world. However, you're now in the Night Kingdom a familiar domain to the masters of the night wind. Hello, traveler. I'm Auroron, the one you've been searching for. Ah, the Fatui's custody. I see, so even Granny has told you that I was coerced by the Fatui. <laughs> I'm afraid you've been brought here by a lie, like a false omen in the lingering smoke. My friend and I only left those traces to lure you here. Deceiving you was never our true intent, however. It was simply the fastest and most feasible way for us to set up a meeting. Greetings, traveler from afar. Be careful with this traveler. His soul is temporarily restrained by us and it appears to have become more fragile in the process. It's taking all my concentration to hold on to him. 
It was I who tasked Auroron with leaving the traces to lead you here, and I who used the Master's ritual to bring your soul to the Night Kingdom. I've heard much about you from the past encounters you've had with my colleagues. Given the present situation in Natlan, I would like to sincerely request a formal meeting with you. In person, I will use the opportunity to explain my goals and motivations to you, as well as why I mistrust Malwika, the Pyro Archon. I believe there is little reason for you to blindly follow her plan. If you would like to hear our intel, then find us to the east of the stadium. But remember, not a word of this to anyone. I would like to avoid any further conflict. You will see me again once you return to reality. No matter what I say, please, help me keep this a secret. This is all to avoid dragging Granny into this conflict. Why are you sitting on the ground? Are you okay? See, Lolly! He froze for a moment and then just collapsed to the ground! Could it have been those leftover remnants from the Night Kingdom? Do you have any itches or pain anywhere? Uh, don't worry. We can take a short break. Sorry, I know I asked for your help. But had I known you were feeling unwell, I wouldn't have taken you on this trip with me. If you're feeling sick, you should just say so. See, Lolly should be able to, uh, exercise any ghosts or weird stuff that you picked up in the Night Kingdom. A seasoned traveler must know the importance of not pushing yourself beyond your limit. If you need anything from me, just say the word. In any case, let's take a bit more time to rest now. Need to be more careful next time. Feeling better yet, Trev? All right, let's get ready. I followed my phlogiston trail earlier to a stronghold guarded by soldiers. I have a feeling that Auroron is probably being held inside. Oh, so it's close by. Then let's head over right away. Well, I recruited you to be my helper, which means we're in this together. Like the wind and the clouds. We either move as one or not at all. But if you want to make it up to me... Then just be sure to fight extra hard when the time comes. Look over there. Huh? Paimon thinks she sees someone in the middle of the camp. That's Auroron. So he really was taken by the Fatui. Alright, we'll take the lead. Hmm. Hey, quit daydreaming. Don't you have work to do? I cannot see the sun. Uh, what? Without the sun, I cannot see the truth. You are currently blocking the light, so I must beseech you to move aside. Huh? Uh, okay, Mr. Philosopher. That's enough mumbo-jumbo. <sighs> wow. I'm going to rip that guy's head right off. See, Lolly's struggling to control her temper. <sighs> Are you ready? Let's go kick their butt on my count. Three, two, one! Auroron! Uh, Granny. Um, Paimon knows she's called Granny Eats to Leave, but it's still kind of weird hearing someone actually call her Granny. And greetings to you too, Gramps. What did you just call him? Gramps? Is that not right? You're Granny's friend, are you not? You seem to be approximately the same age as her, so I figured you've got to be Gramps. How many times have I told you? It doesn't work like that. There are a lot of people who look about the same age as me. You can't go around calling everyone Gramps or Granny. Wait, wait, wait. He's not a child. 
Is he? Don't tell Paimon he's one of those people who look like an adult but are actually only eight or nine years old. Oh, your words have pierced my heart like a thorned vine. Given how hard those thorns are to remove, I may just need to find a pair of tweezers. Why are you so upset? You can just say yes or no. Of course I'm not a child. It's just Granny always taught me to show gratitude where it's due. And since the Masters of the Night Wind raised me collectively, I basically see everyone above a certain age as an elder I should look up to. Exactly. Uh, but if you keep that up, then everyone's going to be your senior. And do you think saying all of this is going to save you from a scolding, Auroron? Haven't I told you a hundred times since you were a kid? Heed the three warnings! Be wary of bees prowling around, scammers looking for their next victim, and strange people who appear out of nowhere. Oh, so you do remember, and you just chose to ignore them! I always knew that living on your own was going to get you into trouble sooner or later. But getting kidnapped? <laughs> that really takes the cake. You won't always be able to rely on other people coming to your rescue, you know. You're just lucky we got here when we did. Or we might be launching another search and rescue operation to find out where they put your severed head. I'm sorry, Granny. I'll be more careful next time. Next time? <laughs> oh, good one. You think there'll be a next time after this? Not a chance. <sighs> They didn't hurt you, did they? No, they just asked me a lot of questions about Natlin's terrain and made me draw a map of the leyline distribution. Okay, now answer me honestly. Were you the one who helped the captain escape after his battle with the Pyro Archon? Yes. So why did you do it? Because... because they said they would need my help from there on out. They also said that if I refused, they'd just come to you, Granny, and they'd already figured out a way to make you do their bidding. Hey! I'm no ordinary Granny! Would they really dare to come after me? And you! Did the gods give you a brain just for you to not use it? Did you really believe everything they said at face value? And not stop to think? Oh, thankfully, the Pyro Archon only asked that we find the mysterious individual from the Masters of the Nightwind, and didn't slap your name on a wanted poster. Don't think for a second that she doesn't know what's happening. Even if the truth that you see will soon manifest into reality, there is still no need to preemptively panic. Have you forgotten the words that I've taught you? I'm sorry. Ugh, oh, forget it. We can submit the details of this camp and the defeated Fatui as evidence of your innocence. Let's clean this place up and get back to the city. Auroron, you better remember this lesson well and seriously reflect on your actions. Also, once we return to the city, come to the speaker's chamber with me. I'll need you to explain everything. Sounds good. Should I bring some of my homegrown vegetables as well? Your... vegetables? Yes, I grow a lot of fresh produce in my garden. I hope the Pyro Archon won't be too picky about the selection. Ah, <sighs> now's not the time to be thinking about that. If you do come face to face with the Pyro Archon, the first thing you should do is... Recite the three warnings. Huh? <sighs> no! You should emphasize that you were not in cahoots with the Fatui! How exactly did the Masters raise this guy? Oh, right. Auroron came to the captain's rescue because he promised to help him in exchange for Seat Lolly's safety. That's right. I'm sorry. Now that you know Auroron was only trying to protect another member of his tribe, could I ask you to petition the Pyro Archon for her forgiveness? We'll give her a full report. We'll let you know once she's reached a decision. Will I need to stay here? Technically, yes. But if Miss Seat Lolly is willing to serve as your guarantor, then we can release you from custody. Ah, uh, sure. I'd be happy to do that. I don't have any more time to waste here. I still have other things to do. Understood. Thank you very much. 
Mr. Auroron, please report back to the Speaker's chamber as soon as you've received notice of the Archon's decision. I understand. Thank you. And thank you too, Granny. Huh. Well, at least you won't need to hide your face anymore. Traveler, Paimon, thank you very much for your help. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about my side of the deal. Once Auroron is settled, I'll go talk to Shilonen and get started on forging an ancient name for you. Oh, thank you! You scratch my back, I scratch yours. It's as good as done. You can just go twiddle your thumbs or something while you wait for the good news. Bye for now. Come with me, Auroron. We've got to find you a place to stay for the night. Goodbye, Gramps. no matter what, so if you want to go, we can go together. We still have another whole day before the meeting, so we'll just meet with them when the time comes. Weird. Paimon doesn't see anyone. Oh, please don't let this be a trap. Good evening. Nice to see you again. Oh, it's you. You shouldn't pop up from behind people like that. What are you, a ghost? I'm terribly sorry. It's just a force of habit. Oh, and what's with you apologizing all the time? You sound so polite and honest, but you're actually doing shady stuff behind people's backs. You're right. Granny tells me that too. Huh. Come to think of it, you remind me of her. Sometimes you two sound really similar, you know. Oh, so you're gonna call Paimon Granny too now? Well, I could. Hmm. It's all clear. Over to you. Excellent. The fact that you showed up proves that I was right about your character. Yet, there's been a lot of talk about you. Child told me that you're passionate about the unknown and willing to take risks. Rather than facing you as an enemy, I would much prefer to bring you to my side. If we allow the current state of things to continue, we will inevitably clash. And that's a scenario that I'd very much like to avoid. I've long heard of your exploits across the nations. Though you have crossed swords with my colleagues many times, I know that you are by no means an unreasonable person. And once you've learned the truth that the Pyro Archon Malwika would never willingly share with you, you may just find it in your heart to consider my proposal. I assume you've already been informed of the Pyro Archon's plan. In order to defeat the Abyss and save Natlan, she still needs two more heroes to appear. Guess that's not important now. I've long kept a close eye on her plan. To be frank, it's an exceedingly risky plan. Will the heroes really appear? And even if they come to her, will their power be enough to drive the Abyss back? 
If any part of the plan goes awry, all of Natlan, even all of Tavat, will pay for her mistakes. Now, you may have been led to believe that this is the only plan available to her. But what if I told you she's had another emergency plan all along? The details of which she has chosen to keep hidden from you. An emergency plan? Yes. A way to keep Natlan intact, even if her original plan fails. But given the painful cost of its execution, she has chosen to keep it as a mere backup plan. Whether this stems from hesitation, fear, or even naivete, I cannot say. But Natlan cannot afford to wait until she comes to her senses. My fear is that given the enormity of the decision, she will be reluctant to confront the dire reality we face until it is too late. There will be no time left to execute the backup plan, and all of Natlan will be lost to the abyss. We have to make the decision for her, here and now. Yeah, do you have any evidence for all this? Just telling us a bunch of scary stuff isn't enough, you know. Besides, wasn't it you who tried to seize the Gnosis for the Tsaritsa plan? I knew you'd be clever enough to see. That's right. I did not seek the Gnosis for the Tsaritsa. Since I was defeated in battle, I must put to rest my thoughts about the Gnosis. But even so, my desire to save Natlan remains unchanged. And now, I have found a new way to solve the crisis. We can implement it immediately if we reach an agreement. <clears throat> huh? Someone's here. Huh? The captain disappeared! Something is rapidly approaching. Oh no. Something! Bad news, chump! It's your granny! Oof. See, Lolly! When did you get here? <sighs> I knew something was amiss after we were separated. Hidden ceremonial tools, an unconscious traveler. I must say, I'm very curious about what you're up to. How dare you go behind our backs like this, Auroron? Colluding with the Fatui? Really? Uh. Oh, here we go again. Cat got your tongue, huh? You really think you can avoid a scolding just by staying quiet? I'm not trying to avoid anything. Oh, and now you're talking back. Well, go on then. Explain yourself. What the heck are you up to? I'm sorry, Granny. I feel so guilty. Ah, uh, you! That's it! Where are my tools? I swear, if I don't teach you a lesson right here and now, I'll... Uh, wait, Tivali! Please, calm down. We, uh, still learned a lot of info, didn't we? Like the fact that the captain isn't trying to seize the Gnosis anymore. So, maybe just save the scolding for later, okay? Uh, listen well, Auroron. You're only getting out of this now because of the Traveler's plea. This isn't over, you hear me? Uh, you're right, Traveler. Let's go. We can discuss this more back in the city. You two keep an eye on Auroron for me, okay? In all my years, I've never had a child cause me so much grief. Do you seriously not see what's at stake here? You've got a head on your shoulders, Auroron. Use it! Why did you help the captain? And I want the truth this time. Uh. Huh. No answer? Think you're being smart? <sighs> then let me ask a different question. What does the captain want? What is his purpose in Natlan? Uh... <sighs> really? You're just going to stonewall me? Uh... <sighs> just use your brain for a second. What do you possibly stand to gain by helping the captain? Only endless trouble awaits you and everyone in the tribe. You've always been a good kid. Why would you throw that all away now? If you're worried about something, just talk to me. Granny would much rather we had a conversation instead of constantly clashing like this. Um... Uh... 
Why is he staring at us all of a sudden? I'm sorry that you have to hear all this. Indeed, it's like going to visit a friend at his house, only to suddenly hear your friend berating a naughty Saurian. Well, that's an oddly specific analogy. Yes, and every time my friend scolded his Saurians, they would look at me the same way you're looking at me now. Helpless and embarrassed. Wait, but you're the one getting your head chewed off. Stop making this about us! Uh, indeed, you've got a point. Then please just hang in there for a little while longer. Granny should be done with her scolding session soon. Oh? You dare gossip between yourselves instead of listening to me? You! Uh, sorry, sorry, Granny. <sighs> sorry, Granny! <laughs> sorry, Granny! You know what? Fine. I'm perfectly aware that everything I say goes in one ear and out the other. You're all grown up now, so why would you listen to an old hag like me? You say all the right things, but then you go and completely ignore me! Well, if that's how you're going to treat me, you can stop sending Aoife over to my place to deliver your stupid vegetables! I don't need anything from you! Um, who's Aoife? A delivery person? Uh, that's irrelevant. The point is, he hangs out with this kid. So he must be no good. <sighs> you kids get to a certain age and suddenly act like you know it all. There's nothing I can say to get through to you. <sighs> Auroron, if you're still thinking about that so-called duty, then please, just forget about it. The ley lines did not fall to this state because of you. And we've long closed the book on that incident. Uh, seems they've started talking about some kind of tribal history. I'm on starting to get lost. That's not it, Granny. I know you tend to get down on yourself when you're upset, but I can tell I really hurt you this time. All I can say is I'm sorry. His voice? Auroron! Where have you gone? It sounds like he's somewhere super far away, but isn't he right here in front of us? I'm really sorry. It's up to all of us to do everything we can to save Natlin. So I've got to go. Get back here this instant! Auroron! Ugh, what is this? Powder from plant spores? Is that- What just happened? How was he able to suddenly get so far away like that? Ugh, it's a trick of his! If you grind spores into a powder and spray it in the air, it can be manipulated to create an illusion. He pulled it off flawlessly. He must have put a lot of time into perfecting it. Don't tell me that's how he's been hunting in the fields these days. Oh, couldn't he have picked up something more useful? Ugh, little brat. That's it. The next time we meet, I'm definitely going to break his legs. Whoa, that's a little extreme. <laughs> but still, why does he feel like he needs to run from us? If his goal is also to protect Natland, then can't we work together? Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting your conversation with them earlier. But even if you'd been able to hear them out, there's no guarantee you would have gained anything substantial. Auroron probably did everything he could to get away because he knew I'd get the truth out of him sooner or later. Ah, oh, that brat. I swear. Uh, well, we've got quite a long walk back to the city. Let's take our time. It'll give me a moment to figure out how to explain all this. Do you two have some time? Feeling hungry? How about we get something to eat? All right, it's been a while since we last ate. Now that we can relax, Paimon just realized how hungry she is. Ah, uh, then let's go. We can find somewhere to sit down and talk. Food and drinks are on me. Uh, really? <laughs> You're not gonna take her offer? Ah, uh, that's right. 
See, Lolly has gotten a lot quieter since Aurora ran away. She seems to be having a hard time. Uh, she's right. We're seasoned adventurers, so we're more than capable of paying our own bill. Hey, come on now. You won't even let me take you out for some food and drinks? <sighs> I just wanted to treat you to a meal. Uh, are you sure? We can save you some Mora. <laughs> uh, Mora is the least of my concerns. Besides, we're definitely due a meal after all the time we've spent together. Let me get this one. I might be an old hag, but I like to think I'm not completely useless. Sure, that's fine with us, but... Paimon doesn't want you to be sad, Seat Lolly. <laughs> don't worry. I'm sure a juicy grilled steak will work wonders. Huh? Hmm? What are you looking at? Uh, do you see two people standing by the door? They look like spitting images of each other. Are they twins? Huh? Oh, how could that be? Eh, I guess my mind isn't as sharp as it used to be. Give me another bottle, boss! Uh, do you think she's drunk? There you go, miss. Oh my, it's not every day you get to see Granny Itzli here with some friends. Not to mention ones who've made a huge name for themselves recently. Oh, so you've heard of us? <laughs> of course I have. Aren't you the ones who saved Kachina and brought her back? No wonder you hit it off with Granny Seed Lolly. She wouldn't spend time with just anybody, you know. <sighs> I don't even remember the last time I saw her with a new friend. Wait, so you call her Granny too? Well, given our ages, it'd probably be more accurate for me to call her my great-great-granny. <laughs> She's one of the most famous people at the Masters of the Night Wind. Most days, hardly anyone even dares talk to her. Huh? Gossiping about me right in front of my face now, are you, Chanka? Oh, please, Granny, I wouldn't dare. I'm just beyond happy to see you bring over some new friends. After all, any friends of our regulars are sure to be great customers too. All right, that's enough. Go on now. I'm sure the other customers would like to talk to you as well. There's no need to keep staring at me. I promise I'll keep my alcohol down until I leave. <laughs> well then, you have my thanks. Uh... Seat Lolly? Seat Lolly? Uh... Who's that? Uh, you got some gall calling me by my first name. Uh, let me guess. You want to test your skills against Granny Eatsley, don't ya? Uh, are you still with the Seat Lolly? You're kind of talking to no one. Ugh, you chumps come around here, picking fights with me. Well, you know what happens next. You lose, and then run off home to tell everyone about how I'm this big scary bully. It's always the same story. You brats start it, I finish it, and then I end up with the reputation of being some kind of Terrible monster among the shamans! I mean, come on! Monster? Me? Really? What did I do to deserve that? Granny Seat Lolly, you're not a monster at all! Exactly! And while we're at it, I'm not some lazy slacker either! Between meditation, advising the chief, and speaking with the Wyab, I actually have a pretty packed schedule, you know! <laughs> oh 
yeah! And I have to mentor all the new kids! Hey, new kid! Yeah, you! Uh, don't play dumb! Didn't I teach you how to find Flo Justin? You see? I know my stuff! I'm a good teacher! Oh, that's more like it! About dang time someone showed me a little respect! Yeah, Granny's a hard worker, alright! You can always rely on old Granny! <laughs> <sighs> did, did she just fall asleep with her eyes open? Oh, jeez. Behind this pitch black curtain, a chapter of hatred reveals itself. Behind the smoke, the lingering smoke. Ah, she's meditating again. She does this whenever she's had a few too many drinks. Her mind's actually racing at this point. It's quite the opposite of sleep. Is this another specialty of the Masters of the Nightwing? No, I'd say it's an ability that's unique to Sitlali herself. While she can easily pick up everyone else's skills and tricks, few have been able to master hers. Warning, warning. Red. Red, the color of danger, has now arisen within that pair of eyes. Huh? <laughs> A uh, traveler? Paimon? What's wrong? Uh, 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 I'm gonna hurl. Hang on, just keep it in. Uh, 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 phew. Okay, it's passed. Uh, that was a close one. You had Paimon worried. Paimon really thought you were about to barf all over the table just now. Uh, how embarrassing. I'm sorry you had to see me like that. That's never happened before, I swear. Are you feeling okay? Wanna take a quick walk and get some fresh air? <sighs> uh, there's so much that I want to say, but... I can't. Why not? Of course you can, just say whatever's on your mind. <sighs> Please, Paimon, it's not as simple as you think. We've only known each other for a few days, right? What would you think of me if I were to start dumping all of my complaints on you after we've only just met? Oh, Paimon gets it. You're hoping that we wouldn't think less of you no matter what you're about to say. Uh, no, that wasn't my point at all! Seriously, don't you youngsters know anything about shame? I'm talking about shame! I've lived all these years and still can't get rid of it! Surely, you know the feeling to- Um... Actually? <laughs> about that. Huh? Tell me what? Yeah... This is as good a time as any! Uh... This is so... Y you heard... You heard my... It's okay, see, Lolly. You had every right to complain about those things. Uh, I can't take it anymore! Why do these things happen to me? <sighs> hearing me mumble under my breath is one thing, but hearing what I mumble in my own head? That's too much! It's just like when you're rolling on the floor in your pajamas, but you forget to lock the door, and someone bursts in to deliver cabbages and sees the whole thing! So that, uh... happens to you a lot? It happens to people in general, okay? Doesn't matter if you're 200 years old, or a thousand years old! Everyone rolls around in their pajamas sometimes! I was just picking something... generic! <sighs> Take a walk with me. I have things to share with you. Looks like she's completely given up. Like those criminals who just confess everything and accept their fate. Ah, oh, well, great view, right? I love coming here by myself. Wow, it's beautiful! <laughs> You're making me want to cry. Oh no, what do we do? I was an expression, okay? A figure of speech. I'm just... <sighs> Let's just have a casual conversation. Really? You don't seem like the kind of person who keeps things 
casual. Well, I guess I used to be more of a stickler for the rules. And you're right. I don't usually open up to the people of my tribe like this. I'm just an eccentric old hag to them. That story's been passed down so long. It might as well be true. But you're just a regular person. <laughs> The kids of my tribe would have a heart attack if they heard you say that. Well, you are powerful. Uh, some are. Others are mad I always come out on top. A few decades like that. And people stop knowing how to deal with you. What about you? Are you scared of me? We don't find you scary at all. Huh. <laughs> That's because you're not from my tribe. You don't know how many dilute I make people realize that no matter how hard they work, they'll never become a living legend like me. Oh, uh, not to brag or anything. <laughs> Maybe it's hard to believe. We believe you. Shilonen has full faith in your abilities, and Auroran didn't seem scared of you. He thinks of you as his granny. Yes, but Auroran's a special case. Mawika already told you about her plan. And you've given so much help to Auroron and me. You deserve to learn the full truth. Auroron's not like other people. As I mentioned, he was abandoned as a child. The reason being, his soul is incomplete. The masters of the Nightwind view this as a bad omen, capable of bringing about illness and misfortune. No one knows who his parents were. He was just left on a rock in the wilderness. It's a miracle he wasn't devoured by some wild beast. The Masters of the Nightwind believe they can see human souls. And in Auroron's incomplete soul, they saw a possibility for Natlan. A possibility to turn Auroron into a vessel for lost souls. The ceremony would allow lost souls to gather within him. Auroron would then be sent to the Night Kingdom to return the souls to their rightful place. Strengthening the ley lines and completing the ceremony. Wait, that doesn't sound right. Now you see the problem. When damage occurs to the Night Kingdom, the souls held within disperse and remain adrift, unable to find a way back to the ley lines. This loss of souls damages the Night Kingdom even further. The ceremony can send back countless souls at once which would benefit the Night Kingdom and the souls themselves. Of course, the vessel, Auroron, would be sacrificed in the process. I wasn't surprised the Chief at the time came up with the plan. The Ley Lines were already in a terrible state. A suitable candidate for the ceremony appears, and now you have the chance to make things better. Of course you're going to take it. When the Chief asked for my opinion, I didn't give my approval, but I didn't object either. So they went ahead with the ceremony. It failed, and Auroron escaped with his life. <laughs> Pathetic, isn't it? By not objecting, I basically gave them the go-ahead. Maybe they didn't have my explicit approval, but it's not like I did the right thing. If the ceremony was successful, Auroron would probably be dead. Of course, in my tribe, death is rarely something to fear. But what kind of message would we be sending by sentencing a newborn to death? By using a human life as a tool? It's not right. So, when I learned the ceremony had failed, I was ashamed by my inaction and absolutely relieved by the result. The plan was never a secret. Or, I guess I should say, there was no point to keeping it a secret. A simple investigation from Auroron would reveal everything. Everyone thought he would be happy he survived, and he never really said anything to the contrary. But, just as I was about to put all of it behind me, he asks this question. Would Natlan have been saved if the ceremony succeeded? Wait, but it's not his fault. 
he knows that, but he still feels guilty. Auroron has a strong ability to perceive souls, more than any of us. He understands just how dire the situation with ley lines has become. Maybe he chose to work with the Fatui because he still thinks he owes a debt to Natlan. I can only imagine what they told him. Traveler, didn't the captain say he found a way to solve the crisis? Maybe that's what brought Auroron into this. Anyway, we can't just let things go on like this. We have to convince him to come back. I... Uh, you don't look so good, Zilali. Maybe you should head back and get some sleep. Uh, probably drank too much. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Forget that. Uh, you've helped me so much already. Hey, we're friends, aren't we? Besides, you already said you owe us a favor, so you don't need to worry about us. Uh, good point. Well, I'll go home and get some sleep. Friends. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Auroran's probably back with the captain, don't you think? You mean about the backup plan? Do you really believe what the captain told us? Yeah, you're right. We should just go to her directly, but she's probably asleep. We can find her first thing in the morning. Her notes! <laughs> go to bed. You're already here. I was just about to come get you. Wow, you're up early. That's impressive. Especially after all the drinking last night. Let's not bring up last night. Anyway, I was also woken up by the commotion. Looks like all the warriors from the stadium are on the move. I heard many areas have been attacked by the Abyss, including the Masters of the Nightwind. I need to head back right away. The Abyss attacked again? Are you sure you can handle it on your own? Do you need our help? I'll be fine. We also have the support of the warriors stationed at the various outposts. Given the quick response, things shouldn't get too serious. The stadium could always use more manpower, so you should join the forces here. I'm done making excuses for him. He's not a child anymore. He needs to take responsibility for his actions. I was the one who vouched for him, so I need to report back to the speaker's chamber. I'll accept however they choose to handle the situation. But I should be able to convince them to let me go back to my tribe first to deal with the attack. As for the ancient name, once we handle this crisis, I'll talk to Shilonen right away. Don't worry, thank you. Alright, I need to start heading back. She left in a hurry? The situation must be really serious. Uh, oh, looks like a lot of people are heading to the stadium. Let's see what's going on! Traveler over here! Oh, perfect. Our star Outlander has appeared. Oh, you're all here! But, uh... What's with the whole star Outlander thing? Just my way of saying how awesome you are. We've got a real emergency on our hands, so this is the perfect time for you to show off your skills. Alright, but can we get a quick rundown of the situation first? The Abyss suddenly attacked the Collective of Plenty. The Masters of the Nightwind, the Children of Echoes, and a number of our camps and outposts in the wild. Yes, and the attacks are increasing in frequency. The tribes have plenty of defenses, so they're safe for now. But I can't say the same for the adventurers and merchants stuck in the wild. Chaska and I have been searching for survivors and treating the wounded. We just got back, but we need to head out again soon. I plan on heading back to the Collective of Plenty, just in case my tribe needs me. What about you, Mulalani? Where are you gonna go? I'll go help the Children of Echoes. 
They're the closest, so I can start fighting right away. What about you guys? We could go together. Yeah, that does sound important. No worries. Just leave the Children of Echoes to us. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe yours truly will have the Abyss on the run by the time you're finished. That would be pretty great, actually. I hope my tribe gets through okay. It'll be fine. Your tribe doesn't do all that bodybuilding for nothing. Let's part ways here for now. And most importantly, be careful, everyone. Oh, and some of us need to avoid getting contaminated by dangerous-looking substances. That will make my job a lot easier. <sighs> Koichi, do we really have to do this now? <laughs> it's all right. She's just looking out for everyone. All right, let's hurry up and talk to the Pyro Archon so we can help the others. Oh, it's you two. As you can see, things are not looking good right now. People across Natlin are in danger. Look, I'm very interested in your recent adventures, but this is not a good time. So we'll have to keep our conversation short. That's all right, we're also in a hurry. We're gonna go help the Children of Echoes after this. What? So he thinks my plan is too risky. He thinks I'm being stubborn. I shouldn't underestimate the Fatui's ability to gather intelligence. The Gnosis does have that function, but there's more to the story. I will answer you honestly, but you must help me keep this a secret. I can use the power of the Gnosis to save Natlan, but it comes at a heavy price. The Gnosis would drain all the souls and memories from the Night Kingdom and weave them into a giant net, which would surround the Ley Lines and protect them against abyssal corrosion. Wait! You can use souls to weave a net? But... does that mean...? Yes. It means sacrificing those souls in the process. Souls are just another form of life. The cruelty of this method is self-evident. The Night Kingdom not only houses the souls of the dead, but also our memories and legends. Using the Gnosis means converting all three into material for the net. Erasing our history and culture. <sighs> Even then, the net can still become corroded. If we cannot find a way to repair the damaged ley lines before that happens, then all those sacrifices are for nothing. Given the enormity of the price, it's a solution I refuse to consider right now. I want us to win, but I also care about how we win, and what that means for us in the end. Now it's true, both plans come at a risk. But after weighing our options, this is our best bet. Natlan is unique among the nations of Tavat. Given the ever-looming threat of the Abyss, the Pyro Archons had to account for the worst-case scenario. Having a contingency plan is our duty. Not just to the people of Natlan, but to all who live on this continent. Still, this has always been a well-kept secret. I'm very curious how the Captain learned this information. Oh, one more thing? The Captain said he found another way to solve the problem. Could be equally as extreme, though. Without the Gnosis, he should have no other option. But I see no reason for him to lie. Seems like our only path forward is to track him down, so he can answer that question for us. Judging by your expression, you must have doubted me, even if just for a second. <laughs> Just as expected. I appreciate your sincerity. Maybe it was out of caution, anxiety, or simple curiosity, but know this. No matter what, our goal remains the same. We both want to save the people of this land. So now that you have your answer, do you still doubt me? <sighs> you scared, Paimon. You've really got a lot of guts, Traveler. <laughs> That's a good thing. Oh, and feel free to call me Mawika. It's what all my friends call me, and I like it that way. As for the captain, the intelligence officers we assigned to the Fatui should be back soon. We'll get our answer then. That's great! Sounds like we just have to wait a little longer. <sighs> Not just yet. 
Even though the Abyss is attacking several locations at once, I'm confident the warrior's station in those areas can handle it. Don't worry. I just need to finish coordinating our available manpower, then I'll take a small team to handle the difficult locations. Wait! You're going to fight in person? Didn't you give up your power? That's true. I'm far less powerful than a god in my current state. But don't forget, I was an experienced and powerful warrior before I ever became the Pyro Archon. No matter how you look at it, my duty is on the front lines. Oh, now you doubt my strength. That hurts, Traveler. If we had time to spar, you might think otherwise. Anyway, even if we respond to these threats in time, it's not a permanent solution in the long run. I've considered moving my people to other nations, but given their close connection to the Night Kingdom, a forced evacuation would have devastating consequences. I've told the chiefs of each tribe to strengthen their defenses and advise people against leaving their settlements. Now, I just need to find the right time to disclose the true nature of the crisis to the people of Natlan. Paimon's a little worried about how people will react. <sighs> yes, but that won't be the only response. In any case, that's for me to worry about. I'll let you know when we have more information on the captain. All right, we should head out. Maybe we can join up with Moani. She can't be too far ahead. <laughs> no need to worry about me. Quick, over here, to safety! <sighs> Kachina, how many people do you have left? There's a trapped caravan that needs our help. We need to rescue them as soon as possible. We'll go together. I... I really thought I was done for. I can't thank you enough. Don't worry about it. We're just glad you're okay. Let's see... Your goods look fine too. Guess the Abyss isn't after Mora. That should be the last Abyssal Pylon near the Children of Echoes. By the way, where's Seat Lolly? I thought she would come with you. The Masters of the Nightwind also got attacked, so she went back to help her tribe. She said we can deal with the ancient name later. Yeah, that makes sense. The attacks are more urgent. All right, this isn't a good place to talk. Let's head back to the tribe. Looks like a few people were hurt after all. Oh, I should have got here sooner. Ugh, the Abyss threw a lot at us at once. I rushed out as soon as I heard the alarm, and there were already so many monsters. Before long, Kachina brought over a whole group of warriors, and just like that, we destroyed several pylons as a team. You mean the situation in the Night Kingdom, right? Yeah, I feel the same way. We've managed to keep it a secret all this time, but more and more people are realizing something's wrong. <sighs> it's impossible not to feel anxious when things are getting worse by the second, and all we can do is wait. That just means we need to buy the Pyro Archon more time. Keep pushing, everyone. Every battle is worth something. You really are an eternal optimist, Mulani. You always find a way to cheer people up. Why, thank you. <laughs> I guess it's one of my better qualities. So, specifics aside, the Pyro Archon confirmed the Gnosis can resolve the crisis, but it comes at a huge price. And somehow the captain finds out about it, goes to fight the Pyro Archon, and calls her out for having a solution but refusing to use it. Honestly, if he has the same information as us, I can't really blame him. We talked to Malika before we left the stadium. According to her, the cost of the captain's plan is too high. And, well, it makes sense. If that was truly the better choice, she would have picked it. Yeah, I trust the Pyro Archon. When I was upset about Kachina's disappearance, she was really sincere and patient with me. Plus, she burned down all those precious mementos for Kachina. She's already proven how much she values even a single person's life. When it comes to Natland's survival, there's no way she would hold back. 
I agree. Maybe the captain weighed the costs and came to his own conclusion, but I'm sure we have different priorities. Life is important, but so are history and memory. As the Archon, she can't tell us everything, but it seems like she wasn't holding anything back this time. The next question is, if the captain found a new way to save Natlan, how come the Pyro Archon has never heard of it? Uh, this is all super confusing. Hmm. We still don't have enough information. Once we figure out what the Fatui are doing, we'll have our answer. Let's head back then. Malika said her intelligence officers should return soon. With how many Fatui there are, someone's bound to give something away. Sounds good. I have a few theories of my own. With a bit more information, we just might get to the bottom of the whole thing. I was just about to ask. Count me in. <sighs> if I was just a bit faster, we could have prevented a few people from getting hurt. People who could help us in the next battle. <sighs> it's all... Register? <laughs> nah. I'll just follow you around. You know, go where you go, do what you do. <laughs> you got it. I just don't want to make the trip back. It's so far. All right. See you all later. Let's get together and celebrate once this is over. Oh, you betcha! Yeah! Oh, Chaska and Queechi are here! Wait. Are you okay, Queechi? Uh, I'm fine. No need to worry. They ran into the Fatui while out on a mission and decided to follow them. The Fatui? Calm down and let me explain. Here's what happened. Watch out. It's the Fatui. Were they attacked by the Abyss? No, wait. It looks like they're protecting a group of travelers. Over there. Do you see? You're right. That's a traveling group from Natlan. Could they be trading for something? Let's keep observing for now. We're glad you're okay. Given the appearance of abyss monsters all over Natlan, you should cancel your journey and seek shelter at the stadium or one of the tribes. Th th thank you so much. I wish there was something we could give you. We don't expect anything in return. We were out on a mission and saw you being attacked. It was our decision to help. If you truly wish to repay the favor, you can keep this a secret. If anyone asks, just say you were saved by warriors from Natlan. Oh, okay. We can do that. <laughs> We're not asking you to cover up our activities. We haven't done anything illegal. Our captain simply wishes to remain undisturbed. Nonetheless, the decision remains yours. If we wanted to keep you quiet, we would have employed a harsher method. G got it. We'll get going now. Did you hear that? They mentioned a captain. Isn't that who the Pyro Archon is looking for? Exactly. We could be onto something big. Still. There was no trade. They were just helping people in need. I didn't sense an ulterior motive. I didn't believe the captain when he said he wanted to save Natlan. But based on what we just saw, it's possible he was telling the truth. Maybe we've been wrong about the Fatui this whole time. It's too early to say. Let's follow them and see what's really going on. So this is where they were headed. Looks tricky. It's heavily guarded on all sides. Koichi, wait for me here. I'll go in and check it out. Oh no you don't. How are you planning to get through all the guard? Look, I can use this terrain to my advantage. With our tribe's special way of getting around. 
I doubt they'll see me coming. We still can't see anything on the inside. What if you can't find cover? You won't have anyone to watch your back if you go in alone. The more heavily guarded the location, the more valuable the secrets. Even if the captain isn't here, we can still figure out what the Fatui are planning. That intel is worth the risk. <sighs> Fine. You're not gonna listen to me anyway, so let me come with you. That's even more risky. You've been running around saving people for days. You're already at your limit. I'm confident I can protect myself. I'm not sure you can say the same. At least right now. I can. <sighs> you really believe that? Fine, don't believe me. But you can't honestly tell me infiltrating a heavily guarded Fatui hideout all on your own sounds more reasonable. You know, growing up, even if I insisted on doing something, it never gave you any trouble. I'm not sure you can say the same. Ugh, all right, all right. If we start arguing, this will never end. We can't let this opportunity go to waste. Ah, ha <laughs> ha, guess that means I win. Don't worry, you're not the only capable young person from our tribe. I can handle this. All right, same plan as usual. We split up, communicate with hand signals, make sure our blind spots are covered, and support each other once we strike. Got your ropes? Yeah, let's go. The Fatui have eyes all over this place. Now. Not sure how many chances I'm gonna get. I need... Good. I made it without getting caught. I should get to that platform over there. But it's guarded by the Fatui. Koichi should have line of sight. I'll wait for her signal. That's it. Now's my chance. staying in one place. I should keep moving. Looks like Chaska is helping me by keeping an eye on the Fatui movements. I'll wait for her signal. Time to move. go. I'll wait for my next chance. Now's my chance! <laughs> I made it! That'll show my sister! Let's see. The Fatui's occupying all the best locations. If we could just get past them somehow... Wait! I've got it! Huh? What's that noise? Did something explode? Oh! 
It stinks! <laughs> what the heck is that? What do you think you're doing? I could ask you the same thing! Good, they're arguing. Looks like they just needed an excuse. They've probably had enough of this job already. The people on the hill over there left to help their comrades. Come get me, Chaska. I hope she gets this hand signal. That's Koichi's signal. <laughs> Smart idea. All right, time to move. Give me your hand, quick. Coming! I checked, and this way is completely clear. It should lead us to the deepest part of this place. Well, I was pretty helpful, right? You know, everyone usually jumps at the chance to work with me. Not my own sister, though. No, she avoids me like her life depends on it. <laughs> I was wrong, Koichi. You've done well. Wait, you're just gonna admit it? Now I look like the mean one. Let's focus on the task at hand. We're in the heart of enemy territory. The more time we waste, the more dangerous this becomes. All right, all right. If you're not gonna take the bait, then I'll drop it. Looks like the Fatili are here to dig something up. I'm surprised they mobilized this many people. I doubt it's because they're interested in our culture and history. It seems like they're looking for a dragon relic called the Source Mechanism. The device is ancient. Barely any information survives to this day. And even people from Natland don't know how to use it. Why would this be the Fatui's target? Hmm, not bad. Looks like it's in good shape. This should be what our Lord's looking for. <laughs> Took us long enough. Come on, let's get this thing back. Back? Back where? Should we keep following? You really want to keep going? Of course. We make a good team, don't you think? No reason to stop now. Hmm? What was that sound? Uh-oh. We've been spotted. Time to go. Falling rock incoming! Watch out for your gadget! What? You'll regret that! After them! Once we got them off our tail, we went back to observe some more. They'd collected several identical pieces of something. It looked like they were waiting, though. So we decided to come back. So, Koichi got injured trying to get them off your tail? <laughs> she pushed herself too hard and collapsed on the way back to the stadium. Well, I didn't cause you any trouble while we were fighting, right? So my perfect record remains. You've done very well. I could make a comment on knowing your limits, but it's not my place. I know, I know. I'm already reflecting on my actions. So, our current intel suggests the Fatui is after the source mechanism. The device is a complete mystery, even to us. <sighs> what does the captain want with it? I have no idea. But it's safe to assume the device could serve a similar purpose to the Gnosis. Shilonen. I need you to gather every scholar in Natland familiar with the secret source. Yeah, I'll get right on it. Thank you both for your hard work. Koichi, it's time for you to get some rest. Oh, and there are gifts from your patients waiting at the speaker's chamber. I've prepared a small gift of my own as a token of gratitude. I'll send it to your home along with the others. My patients. That's so nice of them. You don't need to give us anything, Archon. We were just doing our duty for Natland. <laughs> well, if Koichi doesn't want her favorite source crackers, then... Uh, I accept. Thank you, Archon. <laughs> what am I gonna do with you? There's some for the rest of you as well. They're one of my favorites too, so don't be shy. I'll start investigating the source mechanism right away. If I learn anything, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Yummy snacks! What's next for you two? I'm taking Koichi home. With our parents there to keep an eye on her. I can make sure she actually rests. Hey, it's not like I'm some kind of prisoner. I'll be fine in a day or two. 
There's no need to go all the way home. That's what you always say. Everything's no big deal until you collapse. What if the Abyss attacks again? You're saying if I let you rest in a hotel, you're not gonna rush out the minute you hear the alarm? I won't. Triple promise I won't. Mm-hmm. Fine. On the off chance something like that were to happen, I might. But I'm a doctor. I have a duty to help people in need, no matter... <sighs> I guess you're right. But I don't have to like it. <laughs> this reminds Paimon of when we first met! Except you were the one trying to stop Chaska from doing something dangerous. I'd do the same for anyone trying to put their life in danger. As a doctor, I don't want people to get hurt because of a rash decision. Then try to see things from my perspective. You clearly want to protect your patients. So can't you understand why your own sister would feel the same way about you? The two of you are the same, you know? <laughs> I disagree. I understand the risks and costs of my decisions. Who wants to be like her? Overconfident, always making excuses when things go wrong. <laughs> That's just not true. <laughs> you think I don't have proof? Okay, okay, don't get into another fight. Just pretend Paimon never said anything. Don't worry, Paimon. You didn't do anything wrong. Arguing is just how we communicate. Plus, I guess we are similar in some ways. <sighs> Maybe I rush into things without thinking, but I learned that from her. We're family. I can't... Okay, you don't have to... So, you're all good now? Neither of us are really the type to back down. So we're... Plus, I know you'll wake up one day and re... Be my guest. Come on, see you later, Traveler and Paima. There's no rush. At least grab a nice meal with your... Bye, you two. For real at some point, right? Well, we've learned a lot. Let's go over everything that we know so far. Ahem. <coughs> uh, sorry for... Uh, why do you look so awkward? Okay, I won't beat around the bush. Oh, and I'm sorry for interrupting your rest. Awesome! Just give us your orders! Hey, friends don't order each other around. I'm just here to share some news. Oh yeah, you mentioned how Aurora has always wanted to save Natlan. Paimon and the Traveler discussed it after you left, and we think Aurora is probably back with the Captain. I agree with your hypothesis. And just now, I confirmed it myself. Aurora came back. He helped the Masters of the Nightwind defend our camp. What? He came back? I told him to give up whatever he's doing, but he refused. He said they're just one step away from success, so there's no way he can back out now. Apparently, he came back to fulfill his duty to our tribe. When he left, he said it was because he still has a duty to Natlan as a whole. I'm not surprised you let him go at all! I had to prioritize my tribe. Besides, the situation was intense. I couldn't focus on outside and inside threats at the same time. Plus, he was on guard. He knew I would try to go after him, so he made sure to keep his distance. I kept an eye out for a good opportunity, but it never came. Ugh, all these years of calling me Granny. Don't say that! Your tribe all raised him together, right? <sighs> You're right. <laughs> Seeing him come back reminded me of when he was little. He's not only a child of the Masters of the Nightwind, but a child of Natlan. Besides, Auroran is my apprentice. He might have a few tricks up his sleeve, but I guarantee I know every single one. Wait, what are you saying? Look. Remember how I said Auroran's soul is fragmented? This is the talisman I created to keep it stable, and this gem is what makes the talisman work. It just so happens that Auroran is due for a gem replacement. Uh, since I can't get close to him, I put the new gem in a supply bag and asked Aoife to bring it to him. You guys know Aoife, right? No? Well, he's a pretty famous vet around these parts. He's always bringing me all sorts of things. Aoife doesn't know what's going on, so he agreed, no questions asked. Auroran would find the gem as he probably suspected that I tampered with it. But here's the catch. The trick is on the bag. The moment he touched it, a portion of his memories were copied onto the old gem, which he no longer needed. That's amazing. You can do something like that? 
Uh, most people can't. But I can. That trick he used to bring you to the Night Kingdom isn't anything special, by the way. My technique is much more subtle. So in other words, we have a whole backup of Auroran's memories in this gem! <laughs> the kid thinks he can take me on? Like I wasn't the one who taught him everything he knows? That's amazing, Seat Lolly! Let's take a look right away! Once we get to the bottom of this, we can finally track him down. Uh, I know he thinks of me as his grandma. Huh, that's a tough question. Paimon doesn't have a grandma, so she's not the best person to ask. To be honest, I've always doubted my ability to look after him. But if I stop here, it will haunt me until I'm 500 years old. Yeah, you're right. First anger, then tears. Oh, wait, who are you calling a crybaby? You're just making it worse, Traveler. <sighs> I need to look at his memory. Even if he resents me, refuses to see me, or runs away for good, I don't care. And I won't blame him. You sure you'll be okay? Did you just say you'll come with me? Is that okay? We have a pretty good reason to see it too, don't we? Because... You really mean it? Oh, fine, you can come. Just promise me you'll see this through. Don't worry, we're professional adventurers! Ah, oh, then I place my trust in your professionalism. All right, time to sneak into someone else's memory and engage in some... Uh... Unwanted spying. <clears throat> uh, you heard it here first. <sighs> Are you ready? Look how good you're doing. You'll grow into nice big radishes in the future. And you? Nitha says you're taking up too much space, but I think you're a good tree. What do you think? Hey! How's it going, Auroran? Good. How are you, Uncle Okanbi? Ah, can't complain. What you up to? Naming your vegetables again? No, just some idle conversation. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. They told me you were coming and that you would take some produce with you. Ha! <laughs> Only if you're offering. By the way, I ran into Aoife yesterday. He told me Chaska's fostering a Saurian at his place. Said the thing trampled over a part of your radish garden. I hope you two didn't get into a huge fight. No, don't worry. I'll find a way for him to make it up to me. I've already wrapped your share of the produce. Here you go. You really knew I was coming. That's pretty amazing. Light up the smoke and you can see the path through the shadows. That's what everyone says. Hey, have you seen that strange group of people that just appeared out of nowhere? Appeared out of nowhere? I don't think so. It's the Fatui. Their leader seems like a big deal. He didn't bring many men with him, but they're all elite warriors. It seems like they're looking for someone, but I wouldn't go around asking too many questions. If you run into them, be careful. Hmm. You're from the Masters of the Nightwind, are you not? Why do you live here alone? I enjoy living by myself out in the wild. I guess you're from the Fatui, the one everyone's calling a big deal. Not an inaccurate description. I'm looking for someone who may be known to you. Sitlali is her name. Granny? What does an outlander want with her? I've heard the name. You have business with her? <sighs> There's no point to further questioning if you insist on hiding things from me. I shall seek answers elsewhere. Oh, he could tell I was lying and now he's leaving? He gave up just like that? Hey! At least tell me why you're looking for Sidlali. It's none of your concern. I have my own means of tracking her down. Why are the Fatui looking for her? What does she have to do with them? I can't just let them go like this. I have to figure out what they're planning. Hmm. 
I've just been studying the ley lines and asking for leads on Granny. I can definitely rule out some sort of invasion. The situation has seen no true improvement. The Pyro Archon did not fulfill her promise. My lord! Hmm? Ignore him. He is no threat. He knows I'm following him, but he doesn't seem to care. He's strong, I can tell. But there's something unusual about him, and also familiar in some way. Ah! What is it? My lord, I... I feel dizzy. A ley line disturbance. Certain presences have been forced to wander outside their rightful realm. <sighs> uh, that was a spell from the Masters of the Nightwind. How did he know that? Is he sending those escaped souls back into the ley lines? How did he do that so easily? Soul faring is supposed to be extremely difficult. This could be related to why he's searching for Granny. Ah, I feel much better. Thank you, my lord. Think nothing of it. Stay vigilant, and continue to gather information. The Abyss could attack at any moment. If you notice any irregularities, assume drill formation and be prepared to fight. However, there is no reason to over-engage. Information is our first priority. Yes, sir. Why are the Fatui fighting against the Abyss? Do they really mean us no harm? I've been following him this whole time and still they ignore me? Do they really not care? It seems like his subordinates refer to him as the captain. Never heard of him before. And now he's headed to the stadium. That's unusual. Oh, what is he gonna do? You two, with me. Everyone else, wait here as instructed. Send word to the other teams to retreat immediately if this fails. Yes, sir! He's going inside? But the Pyro Archon is in there. What does he want with her? Forgive me, my lord. Allow me to check one more time. Do you truly wish to do this? The time for idle observation is over. It now falls on me to act. This nation is out of time. Yes, sir. He just walked straight into the stadium. What is he gonna do? <sighs> They're both incredibly strong. How long will they have to fight until someone comes out on top? Wait, this feeling. Just like the other day near the ley lines, it's faint. Like a soul's trying to escape. Where is it coming from? Is that why he's looking for Granny? If he dies here, then all clues will be lost. I can't let that happen. As for you, I must confess. I did not expect that little trick of yours to save the day. No matter how dense the fog, as long as the sun remains, we cannot turn day into night. She could have dispelled it. She simply chose not to. <sighs> you don't have much time. And you're injured on top of that. What do you plan to do next? I'm beginning to see just how useful you may turn out to be. You heard something from here, didn't you? <coughs> <laughs> no need to force yourself. I've never seen anyone match the Pyro Archon in battle before. Hmm. I didn't expect you to intervene at such a critical moment. You know I've been following you. Why didn't you stop me? When walking in the forest, it is only natural to encounter wild beasts. However, not every beast has the courage to come out and bite. And yet... One of those very beasts saved your life. Hmm. Then speak. What do you want? I didn't save you because I wanted something. My soul is more perceptive than others. I can sense that the ley lines are extremely weak. <sighs> I don't know what the Pyro Archon is planning. 
Can she... The questions you asked her just now. Well, I've had very similar doubts. So, I felt like I had to help you. Ah. So, you can tell the truth. That was quite a reckless decision to make. I'm not sure you realize that. There's no turning back for me now. What I did back there is going to get me in a lot of trouble. You attacked the Pyro Archon in broad daylight and I used my spell to save you. A single glance was likely all it took for her to recognize my tribe. So, we're in the same boat. You seem to care little for my thoughts on the matter. It's too late for that. Start from the beginning. Why are you looking for Sitlali? Do you know her? Explain your relation to her first. I know you two are acquainted. It was obvious the moment I mentioned her name. Silali is my elder and my teacher. She taught me everything I know. It's my duty to protect her. If you truly wish to protect her, you should have let me perish at the Pyro Archon's hand. Yet, you chose otherwise. Do I really need to tell you what that means? <sighs> I want to do something to change Natlin for the better. Something I can accomplish with my own two hands. You're stranger than anyone I've ever met. Strange? <laughs> Cicelali is said to be the legendary Granny Eatstley, someone capable of communicating with the Wyub. And the Wyub are the key to information on the Night Kingdom. Why do you need knowledge on the Night Kingdom? That is not something you need to know. Don't forget. I saved your life. Do you not believe the Fatui capable of betraying a debt? People can lie, but souls cannot. I can tell there's a weight to your soul. A sense of justice. You may not live among your tribe, but you certainly know their tricks. I apologize for my rash judgment. You are more capable than I imagined. Let's go. We'll see if you have what it takes to join my plan. I see. Interesting approach. Worth trying, I think. Rather than weaving a net to protect the ley lines, this method would address the root problem by reconstructing the ley lines themselves. Traveler, Paimon. Uh, Paimon's fine, just, um, <laughs> a little dizzy. Of course. I'm just... Oh, I'm so mad at him. <sighs> After everything, he still can't let go of the past. <sighs> for some reason, he thinks he owes something to the people who cared for him. <sighs> Stubborn, self-righteous fool. Where's that gonna get him? Now that he's all grown up, he thinks no one can tell him what to do? He thinks he can just... run away whenever he wants! <sighs> I'll show him. If he tries to run one more time, he's got another th Maybe stubbornness runs in the family! Like grandmother, like grandson, as they say! Is that supposed to be a compliment? Huh! <sighs> that kid's got nothing on me. Anyway, back to what we just saw. I don't even know what to make of it. Yeah, the captain seriously wants to reconstruct the ley lines? What does it even mean? Something like the Loom of Fate, maybe? But how does it help with the Abyss? The Loom of Fate? Oh, I... It's kind of hard to explain. Basically, it's a device from Conrio that has unbelievable power. Anyway, if he really wants to manipulate the ley lines, everyone in that land will be affected. Oh. Which means the captain has been honest from the very beginning. Auroron's memory proves that. Why is he so obsessed with saving that land? Oh, we've got to tell Moika about this right away. Yes. She needs to know about this. <laughs> 